Okay, for the last lesson in this unit, we're going to take a look at rational equation applications, which means that we're going to solve rational equations using word problems or application-based problems. So, the first thing, read the problem carefully and understand what is being asked. This is crucial because frequently we wind up solving for the wrong thing because we didn't really read through the question or highlight important pieces of information. The next thing, we need to introduce a variable to represent an unknown quantity. Most of the time, we're going to state that it is going to be the quantity that we're trying to solve for. Not always, as we'll see, but usually that's going to be the case. Then we're going to write an algebraic equation, in this case a rational equation, to represent the information, and we're going to solve the equation. In the end, we're going to state the solution to the problem, and check that the solution actually makes sense in the context of the original problem. So, for the first example, two consecutive whole numbers, sorry, two consecutive even whole numbers, the difference between the reciprocals of the two numbers is 1 over 60, find the two numbers. So, we have a couple of terms we need to use here. We're going to use consecutive, which means they come one after another. They're even, and they have to be whole numbers. So I'm going to state that the first number is going to be x. Well, if they're consecutive and they're even, then that means that if I think of consecutive even numbers like 2, 4, 6, 8, they have to be two numbers apart to be even. So the next one is going to be x plus 2, a number that comes 2 after whatever the first number was. The reciprocal of these are going to be 1 over x or 1 over x plus 2. If the difference between these reciprocals so when I'm saying the difference, I'm subtracting them, is 1 over 60, and I need to find the two numbers. Well, I'm going to say 1 over x minus 1 over x plus 2 has to equal 1 over 60. And this is the equation that I'm solving. So I'm going to multiply all of them by the lowest common denominator, in this case, because all their denominators are different and they can't be factored, my lowest common denominator is going to be 60x and x plus 2. The nice thing is that they're all over 1. So I can state that I have 60, uh, don't need brackets here, I can just say 60x and x plus 2 over x minus 60x and x plus 2 over x plus 2 is equal to 60x and x plus 2 over 60. Get rid of the x in the first case, the x plus 2 in the second case, and the 60 in the last one. And this is going to lead me with, well, 60 times x plus 2 is going to give me 60x plus 120 minus 60x is equal to x times x plus 2, x squared plus 2x. The 60x and negative 60x will cancel each other out. So really what I have is, when I move the 120 over, 0 is equal to x squared plus 2x minus 120, which means that I have 0 is equal to x plus 12, x minus 10. In this case, x could either equal negative 12 
or positive 10. Here's where the whole numbers part comes into account. Because it's whole numbers, I know that x can't be negative because that's an integer, which means that the 12 doesn't make sense. So x has to equal 10 in this case. Then that means that the second number, which is x plus 2, is going to be 10 plus 2, or 12. The two numbers are 10 and 12. All right, one of the com most common ways that reciprocal functions will come up are problems involving distance, speed, and time. Anybody who has taken physics or is interested in taking physics, this is one of the most common crossovers with our math course and the physics 20 course. So we know that distance is equal to speed multiplied by time, or at the same rate, speed is equal to distance over time, or time is equal to distance over speed. In this case, the average speed of an airplane is eight times as fast as the average speed of a train. To travel 1,200 kilometers, the, uh, the train requires 14 hours more than the plane. What is the average speed of the train and the plane? Well, they're both traveling the same distance, 1,200 kilometers. Their average speed, I don't know. That's what I'm going to be solving for. But I do know that the airplane is eight times as fast as the train is. So I'm gonna say that the train will have a speed of X and the airplane is going to be eight times what that is. The last part when it says time in hours, well, if time is equal to distance over speed, then for the first one, for the train, the time is going to be the distance divided by the speed of x. For the airplane, it's going to be the distance divided the speed by the speed of 8x. Now, if it says that it's 14 hours more for the train than the plane, then the difference between the amount of time it takes for the train and the airplane has to equal 14 hours. In this case, I know that my lowest common denominator is going to be 8x times x. So, I'm going to solve it. I'm going to say that if I have 8x times 1200 over x minus 8x times 1200 over 8x, that's going to give me 8x times 14. Divide out the x from the first one, the 8x from the second one, and I can say that 8 times 1,200, or 9,600, minus 1,200 is going to equal 8 times x times 14 is 112x. Or that 8,400 is equal to 112x. 8,400 divided by 112 is going to give me 75. There is my speed of the train. If my plane is 8x, then I can say that 
8 times 75 is going to equal 600. The speed of the train is 75 kilometers per hour. And the speed of the plane is 600 kilometers per hour.